Well, hello, and welcome to episode 101 of Drink the Movies. I'm Brian here, as always, with Michaela. Michaela, we made it through spooky season. We survived all of the all of the terrors of the night, and we made it into, into November, full-blown fall now. Uh, That's pull right. on your sweater, have something warm to drink, have a good time. That's right. Yes, we're getting into uh, deep fall. Uh, for those of you who are not our age, uh, there are seasons to the fall season. There's the, you know, just beginning of... Uh, September, I feel like when pumpkin spice is like super exciting and fun and it's still warm out, but the leaves, you know, start to fall off your tree and then everybody's ready for Halloween in October and then that ends. And now we're like in the deep richness of fall where if you're American, um, Thanksgiving is right around the corner and you're all of a sudden wanting turkey and a lot of uh, warm drinks because now it's freezing. It's it's a very strange, wonderful time here at Drink the Movies. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, we uh, we quickly transitioned from uh, Halloween to Christmas, uh, as it were, here. And uh, we're definitely making that move. But we have a lot of uh, really good movies to talk about, uh, kind of hit on those fall themes. Uh, we've got some new release uh, kind of stuff coming out this month. And it's going to be definitely a good time. And hopefully everyone had a safe and happy Halloween. Uh, did some trick-or-treating, did all the fun stuff there, got uh, got all that out of their system because it is time to dive headfirst into fall. And what better way to do that than uh, by going and take some mathematics courses? So why don't we take a quick break and we're going to be back to talk about a cocktail uh, that's going to hit all of the right notes for the right film for this time of year. So we'll be right back. So this cocktail is I'm very proud of um, because um, I had to think of all the things that reminded me of deep fall. And as you said earlier, it's a great time to think about going back to school. And if Mm -hmm. I were to go to school and I were the math genius that I always wanted to be at MIT, I would um, want to meet a really, really hot looking British person in a bar, hit on them, have it go well, and like go in your face to the guy who was like fighting, fighting over me, uh, fighting over this person with me. And so I wanted to mix something that had caramels because that's about as arbitrary as coffee. And if you know, you know, and then apples, because how do you like them apples? So We found this really great recipe that does all of those things and also has bourbon for our bourbon fans out there. And it's called the Caramel Apple Cocktail. That's right. Yeah, it comes from the uh, Spice blog. And yeah, it has all the good things. It has caramel, it has apple, it has bourbon. Uh, And what else do you need on a fall day uh, as you're doing some mathematics? So let's uh, whip one of these up. It's going to come together real, real easy. So uh, into your shaker tin, let's go ahead and throw two ounces of apple cider in there. Uh, two and a half ounces of bourbon, and then roughly a tablespoon. I totally just eyeballed this. I didn't measure it out at all. Uh, just uh, just your best guess there. Um, in the the spice blog, they use a Torani, uh, like ice cream syrup. I couldn't find that, so I grabbed Ghirardelli uh, caramel syrup, uh, which I think is probably just a fine substitute. Uh, put that in there, a little bit of ice, shake that up, strain it into your cocktail glass with a big ice cube. Uh, you can rim that with some cinnamon sugar if you feel so inclined to uh, jazz it up a little bit. And then you're going to sip on it. Enjoy all of the flavors of fall. You are. Now, here's the deal. When we tried this, Brian, I remember you saying, I don't know if this is going to be that great. And we tried it and we thought it was OK. Um What I did, because I agreed, I I didn't think it, it's hard when it's cold because the caramel sauce is supposed to really kind of melt, I feel like, and it doesn't melt because it's too cold. The bourbon and the apple cider tastes okay, but it's kind of, it's almost like an apple juice kind of cocktail for adults. So what I did um, was I went ahead and heated the apple cider and I didn't strain it uh, and didn't shake it up. I put it in a cup added my two and a half ounces of bourbon. And then what I did was just drizzle the caramel sauce on top, give it a little stir, then it melted. And that I felt was much better. And because it's cold out, it's much more comfy and cozy tasting and -hmm. feeling just overall. So um, it kind of depends on what you're feeling when you think about this cocktail, but that's really uh, what did it for me. So if, if, if it doesn't sound great cold, try it warm. Yeah, I go to try warm. Um, I did mine cold, um, obviously, too, uh, just as the uh, recipe called for. Um, and I thought that it was pretty good. Um, 
apple cider, bourbon, caramel are three of my jams. I love all three of those flavors. So I was expecting to really like this, but yeah, cold somehow it just kind of all like melted together. Like the flavors didn't really pop quite enough. So yeah, I think heating it up would be good or using like a spicier bourbon, maybe like a rye uh, whiskey would maybe set that off a little bit. And it probably depends, you know, which particular cider you're using or, you know, bourbon, that kind of thing. So you can play around with it, but definitely try it warm. Um, I did think that this was because it's not so like <laughs> flavor nuanced. This would be good to make a big batch up of if you were having a fall get together um, would be good. It would uh, please a lot of palates, I think probably, um, you know, and something kind of fall and rich and, and delicious, uh, you know, for that. So maybe, maybe give that a try, but definitely try it. Um, it's definitely worth your time to try. And you probably have some leftover apple cider. If you've, you know, been anything like Michaela and I just, you know, hoarding the stuff over the last month as we made it through Halloween. So, uh, yeah, give it a try, take pictures. It's, it's very pretty. Um, especially if you rim it with that cinnamon and sugar mixture, uh, delicious. So give it a try, send us your photos and let us know what you think about it. But for now, Michaela, you know, we got to get to our part-time job. We're mopping the floors, but maybe there's a math problem or two we can solve along the way uh, and get some help really trying to identify uh, what we need to do with our lives. So everyone hang on tight. We will be right back to chat about this week's film, Goodwill Hunting. I've spoken to the judge and he's agreed to release you. Really? You have to meet with me and a therapist every week. I need someone who can get through to them. Like me. You got me. Maybe you married the wrong woman. Maybe you should watch your mouth. Nobody can understand you, right, Will? You're a genius. I can't learn anything from you. I can't read in some book. Unless you want to talk about you. Are you terrified of what you might say? You don't owe it to yourself. You owe it to me. Because I'd do anything to have what you got. So would any of these guys. Maybe you're perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to ruin that. That way you can go through your entire life without ever having to really know anybody. You ever think about getting remarried? My wife's dead. Hence the word remarried. My wife's dead. Well, I think that's a super philosophy, Sean. I mean, that way you could actually go through the rest of your life without ever really knowing anybody. Robin Williams. Matt Damon. Ben Affleck. Stellan Skarsgård. And Minnie Driver. Goodwill Hunting. A film by Gus Van Sant. Spoiler warning for Goodwill Hunting. If you've not yet seen this film, we're going to talk about the end. We've warned you. So if you haven't seen it and you still want to listen to us, that's fine. But if you don't, uh, I suggest you press pause now. You go get yourself a caramel apple cocktail, hot or cold. You go watch the show and then you come back and join us for our chat about Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you've not seen Goodwill Hunting, you definitely should. It's definitely worth the two hour time investment to go see because it is one of the one of the greats, one of the greats of uh, movie time. And we're going to be talking about all the things like Michaela said. So this came out in 1997, uh, which uh, that means 25, 25 years, Michaela, I guess this year, right? 25 is my math, right? 25 uh, my years? math is not as good as uh, Will Hunting's or Michaela's uh, for that matter. But yeah, 25 years. So uh, kudos to that. Uh, directed by Gus Van Sant. And it stars, uh, of course, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. And then the late Robin Williams. Yeah. Uh, and um, there's a lot of other folks in this film as well that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Minnie yep. Driver's in it. She plays kind of the love interest. Um, Stellan Skarsgård is in it. Um, he looks so young now. Uh, and now when you <laughs> see does. it, um, and he's supposed to be kind of a middle aged guy then. So it's amazing. He he looks amazing. He's like, I don't even know how old he is. And now that he's been in all the Marvel stuff, it's just crazy that he was once in, in this film to me. Um, but uh, there's a bunch of other uh, actors that kind of play in the periphery that make it big later. And so it's really fun to see them kind of getting their humble starts in, um, in this film. Uh, this film uh, did really well. Um, it made a lot of money and it got a lot of uh, positive uh, critical praise. It was nominated for nine Academy Awards. Um, it lost seven of those, but it did win two uh, the two that it did win, I think are really important in kind of the history of film um, and actors. Um, and that, of course, is the one, the best supporting actor for Robin Williams. It was his fourth time being nominated. Uh, it was one of those things, right? It was very much a Leonardo, 
Leonardo DiCaprio sort of thing where people are like, is Robin Williams ever going to win one? Uh, he was nominated for Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poet Society, Fisher King. And after he didn't win for Dead Poet Society and Fisher King, uh, people thought it was maybe never going to happen, but uh, definitely happened here. Definitely well-deserved. And then the other was the best original screenplay for Matt Damon and uh, Ben Affleck. Uh, now, obviously, uh, this was kind of kind of their breakout into Hollywood. And uh, where would Hollywood be today without Matt Damon and Ben Affleck? Uh, it would be a completely different landscape. So I think that these two were pretty important, Michaela. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember watching the Academy Awards when uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck won. I've only seen people uh, more excited maybe one time when Cuba Gooding Jr. won the year before uh, for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, they... They actually reference Cuba Gooding Jr. because they said thank you so much for telling us, for giving us a heads up of how to say thank you at the Academy Awards because <laughs> they thanked everybody and they did it in like 37 seconds. It was absolutely amazing. And then, of course, uh, when Robin Williams wins, um, it's just it was such a beautiful thing. And the great thing about uh, the Academy Awards is all of the. Um, pretty much all of them are now on YouTube. So if you uh, missed it somehow, or maybe you weren't alive because it was 25 years ago, um, go look it up. Those are really some some beautiful acceptance speeches and, of course, really important to the history of film. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, this movie definitely kind of kind of paved the way. Um, you know, it leaned really heavily into this uh, kind of dialogue driven sort of narrative and, you know, really kind of dives down into the depths of, you know, what it means to be a, a person and a friend and uh, true to your upbringing and hometown. But, you know, uh, you know, the loneliness that accompanies genius and all of this stuff is, is just really, really fantastic. So why don't we get into the movie a little bit? We're going to um, not really drive through the full narrative of the movie because it's, it's a lot of talking and just a lot of character interactions. So let's start with our main character, Michaela Will Hunting, played by Matt Damon. Uh, we see him, you know, he's he's a guy from just outside of Boston, you know, obviously loves Boston, loves going to Irish pubs, uh, loves sports, you know, loves all the things that the stereotypical uh, just outside of Bostoner uh, loves. And that's who we're getting yeah. introduced to in this movie. Yeah, he's a he's a got this really kind of rough and tumble demeanor about him. Uh, Will uh, lives in kind of this one room. His friends come and pick him up in an old uh, Oldsmobile Delta 88, which was the car that I started to uh, drive with. And that was my first vehicle. So this was very nostalgic for me. But his friends kind of pick him up in this car. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of things in his in his one room house. He, you see like a stove and a few books and a chair and like a mattress on the floor. So, you know, at, at, at least he's from very humble beginnings. Uh, his friends actually are really special. Um, he's very close with them. There's there's kind of there's this foursome that kind of go and do all the things. Um, and he is his friend Chucky, obviously, is played by uh, Ben Affleck. And this was Ben Affleck before he got his teeth capped. This is before he became famous. He still has the great hair. But they've got these really amazing uh, Boston accents from Southie, you know, Um mm -hmm. He's got his friend Billy, played by Cole Hauser. Uh, if anybody is into Yellowstone, uh, this is Rip. Uh, this is his first film, I think. Um, he looks totally different, but it is him. And then, of course, Casey Affleck plays Morgan. Um, and they're all just kind of these clowns, you know, and they're they're in their late teens, early 20s. Um, they're trying to talk, they're always talking about how they're, you know, some of them are between jobs, trying to find these kind of um, labor force kind of job, very blue collar Um and they, but they love sports. They're, you know, trying to go and see some, some of the, <laughs> some of the stuff up in Boston and only one of them has a car. So they're always fighting about who gets to sit in the front seat. Um, but you get the feeling that Will is, um, you know, this is his life and his friends. They're all kind of from these rough and tumble, humble beginnings. And uh, um, they see somebody that they don't like uh, is kind of a clear as to why they decide they don't like this guy, I guess. He wasn't very nice to them in kindergarten 15 years ago and they decided to pay him back. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're uh, <laughs> they're quick to take action when people affront them. I, I there's a girl walking by. I don't know if uh, they ever heard him say something to the girl. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah, they definitely they jump out of the car. They they get into a fight, and yeah, it just kind of sets the scene for yeah, like you said, kind of this this rough and tumble, rowdy, uh, very close knit, this foursome, and obviously, uh, you know, his best friend there, Chucky, um, you know, played by Ben Affleck, uh, really great. And you know, as we go through the movie, it kind of explores uh, their relationship because. You know, kind of they're the same. They're from the same town. They have the same interests, but but they're very different uh, people and their capabilities and what they have. And that's one of the one of the things that really resonates with me as we're watching watching the movie is kind of their their interactions as friends as this kind of kind of goes on, because we see Will Hunting is is really destined for greater things. Right. Um, You know very reluctantly uh, kind of at the outset of this really by the end of this still pretty reluctantly, you know, he still stays t- true to his roots there, but, but we find out some stuff about Will, right? So he's like, he's like a super genius. He's like, uh, we see him one time, like lay- sitting on that bed that's on the floor, like, like speed reading this book, like, like one second per page, boom, boom, boom. He can just, he remembers all this stuff. He retains all this stuff. Um, and he's a genius. Uh, but what does a genius do? Uh, they mop the floors at MIT, right? He's just a janitor. Uh, he doesn't care about being a genius. Um, he just he just kind of has that. That's like that's like his shield, right? He he doesn't have to get into fights with people because he knows that he's way smarter than them. He can throw all this stuff out. It's <laughs> it's very distracting and very off putting. Uh, but one day you're mopping the floors. There's a math problem on the chalkboard outside of this room, uh, outside of uh, Professor Lambo, Doctor Lambo, uh, who is played by Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, really good. Puts this math problem out. He says, maybe one or two of you will, will figure it out in a year. But the janitor, Will Hunting, he just looks at it one night, uh, does it in his mirror uh, at home after you go out drinking all night and then comes back and does it the next day. No problem. Uh, Will, yeah. smart guy, smart guy, smart guy. I mean, so this guy, Dr. Lambo, uh, he posts this difficult combinatorial mathematics problem on a college blackboard. Right. And it's one of those things where it's like, ha ha. And I think this is for his master's level class or it's for his PhD students. It's not for your normal math uh, student that's getting a bachelor's, but this is MIT. So it's supposed to be like the smartest of the smartest of the smartest. Right. And he's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, maybe somebody will do this. And um, but it's a it's definitely a carrot kind of technique of teaching in math where you, you know, have to spend a lot of time figuring stuff out in your own time. Um, It's not just about kind of getting the answers right during during the class time. And so within like a day or two of uh, Will seeing it, he solves it and he doesn't put his name on it or anything. He just solves it and moves on. Uh, Meanwhile, everybody is losing their mind in the math community at MIT because they're like, oh my gosh, who did this? And uh, it's a mystery because no one, no one will cop to it, which is great. Um, This is the most honest group of people I think I've ever seen because no one is going (laughs) to take the credit. Um, but, you don't want to get called out on it. I mean, like, I oh, that's that was me. True. <laughs> that's true. Yes, I did that. Combinatorial. I created that set point topology. Yeah, no. Um, they all say, nope, not me. Um, a bunch of people start showing up to Dr. Lambeau's classes to try and figure out who did this. And uh, and lo and behold, it's it's the guy mopping the floors. But he doesn't make a big deal out of it, right? He he obviously doesn't put his name on it, he doesn't do any of that, but um, you know. Professor Lambeau is like, okay, guys, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put another one up. And it took the professors years to prove, which is kind of the way it is in mathematics, right? You mm. work on something for years. This is why I didn't get a PhD for years <laughs> until, you know, and maybe you figure it out. And um, so he does that and he's like, good luck. You know, whoever decides to work on this, maybe it'll just sit there for six months. And like the next week, Dr. Lambeau and his, and his, a uh, teaching assistant who's also brilliant is they're walking down the hall and they see this kid who's what Will's 20 years old. He's not even 21 yet. And mm. he's like writing stuff on the board. And um, he immediately sees that they're watching him and he says, Oh, I'm sorry. And he kind of walks away, but they try to stop him. And there's kind of this weird, you know, altercation because he doesn't want to be stopped. He doesn't want to talk about it. He thinks he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, and then they look right. at yeah. the board and it's like, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah, because he's, that looks he's right. just there with, oh. 
yeah, because he's just there with the uh, with the mop bucket, right? They think that he's I don't know vandalizing the board, but they look at it and yeah, it's right. So obviously he's he's very good at this math. Like I said, he's doing all the speed ring. Uh, we find out exactly how smart he is because his friends and him decide. I guess it's just for a laugh, more or less. But they decide to go uh, to some bars over by Harvard so they can they can have some drinks. They can I, I don't know what they're what they're intending to do. Just uh, you know, rub shoulders with some with some Harvard kids. You know, just uh, uh, try to get in there and I don't know. <laughs> have them slum it with them or vice versa. I'm not hundred percent sure, but we meet uh, Skylar there, you know, Will goes up to her. He's talking to her. Uh, you know, they lock eyes from across the bar. They have a little bit of interaction. Uh, some, Neanderthal looking dude from Harvard comes up, try to prove how smart he is, but uh, don't do that with Will because Will hunting is going to get the one up on you every time. And he definitely puts him in his place. Uh, and Skylar uh, seemed to fancy that. And then you get a really great exchange, right? Because Will just goes back with his friends, just drinking. That's all they're there for. They don't think anything's yeah. going to come of the night of being in Harvard. Um, and she comes up and she says, why are you such an idiot? I sat there for 45 minutes waiting for you to come over to me. And he never did. Why are you being so lame? Here's my number. Call me. We should start dating. And that's what's going to happen, Michaela. How about them apples? <laughs> How about them apples? I love this. I love this scene so much because um, his friend is trying to talk to these girls. And of course, the Neanderthal looking guy that you were talking about, he's got this weird like Michael Bolton hair uh, when Michael Bolton had hair. And it's <laughs> I mean, maybe it was great in 1996 when this film was made. I don't know. But it's not great. And Will totally owns him and then shames him and is like, why would you, why are you acting this way? Cause you want to impress these girls and embarrass my friend. Like, why would you do that, man? And then he, of course, he's not scared at all. He's like, if we want to, you want to take it outside, we can take it outside, but not in like a jerk way, just a, Hey, this isn't cool. Don't do that. And of course, Skylar eats it up because it's amazing. Um, the way he does it is really smooth, but doesn't get, you know, she's like, you're an idiot. And he says, you know, I, we should hang out. And she says, great, maybe we can meet for coffee. And it's one of my favorite lines. He's like, or I can just grab a bunch of caramels because that's about as arbitrary as drinking coffee. So smooth. Will Hunting, where did he get this from? We don't know. But it's amazing. It's an amazing scene. And uh, you just know that this is the beginning of something great between the two of them. Yeah, that's right. It is the beginning of uh, something great between the two of them. We'll get to see them uh, kind of periodically off and on throughout the movie, having some dates, spending some time together. Um, and one of the one of the things that you know really strikes me kind of about their relationship is, you know, he he's a brilliant genius person. Right. But he doesn't really care that he's a brilliant genius uh, so much. He just wants to he just wants to be himself he wants to go out and drink and go and have fun and you know party and hang out with his friends and do all this all this fun stuff so you know we see skylar who's a medical student at harvard she's trying to learn all these things and he's like i'll just tell you how to do it in like one second if you want me to and she's like no i actually have to I have to learn this stuff so you get kind of you know while the relationship is blossoming there's also this deep disconnect right because you know it, if you're really naturally good at something uh, you don't understand that that's not something that comes naturally to other people, right? Like you, it's like a disassociation that you have with it. And you see that and that gap kind of gets bigger and bigger um, as well as kind of trying to double down on, you know, staying the same, not growing um, into, you know, his potential, what he could become, you know, right. all the things that he has the capabilities of doing because he's not interested in it. Um, and you see that crack starting to grow kind of as they're uh, going through this, you know, through their dates um, and ultimately, yeah. you know, break up, you know, kind of into the, into the start of the third act of the film. Yeah. I mean, Will, I think he would have been fine if he just hadn't gotten in that fight uh, in some ways. Right. Cause he got into this fight. Um, he goes and gets arrested and um, he actually hits one of the cops <laughs> that is trying to arrest him. And so now, you know, they, they look at his file. He's had a bunch of suspensions, um, he's had a bunch of uh, cases that were thrown out of court, a lot of violence, um, a lot of like petty theft. And, you know, he has represented himself and that's served him really well because he is so smart. He can, you know, and he's got this eidetic photographic memory. It's really amazing. So he can pull out all of these uh, cases and where precedent has been set so he can just weasel his way out of all of this well that's fine yeah. for every judge but this judge who i want to say is the judge chris christopherson because he looks just like him i don't see him on the cast but i was like who is this guy he's like an angry grandpa christopher christopherson it's amazing 
exactly i do love this part because yeah he's like he's like well and uh, some random case from like 17 19 or something you know whatever <laughs> like, right like like throwing this random stuff out and yeah like you said every other judge would kind of let him get off you know scot-free or whatever put on probation but this judge is like absolutely not you're going to jail i'm sick of you uh but luckily you know that math professor uh dr lambo knows what will is capable of and he's willing to kind of stick his neck out for will because he sees some greatness there um and he wants to try to try to capture that it's kind of like this lightning in a bottle thing and lambo has big big dreams for will you know even if will doesn't have any dreams for himself he has big dreams for him so he says i went and talked to the judge uh he's going to let you out i'm in charge of you don't get in trouble because i don't want to get in trouble for you getting into trouble um and you have to come in do math with me a couple days a week and you have to go see a psychiatrist because uh, your head, I don't, we don't know what's going on in your head. So we need to figure right. that out. Right. I mean, and, and these, these therapists at first, Will is like, no, man, I'll sit and do math with you all you want, but I don't need a therapist. I don't want to talk to anybody. And so he thinks he'll just kind of screw with him a little bit. Right. So of course, Dr. Lambeau, he is very well renowned. He has a fields medal and in math, uh, everyone, that's a real big deal. Uh, they don't have a uh, piece. <laughs> they don't have like the um, the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for math, but they have a Fields Medal. And so he's won these. He's he's well known in like these really esoteric, very smart communities all over the world. And so he asked his friend Henry, uh, Henry Lipkin, who's a world renowned uh, psychotherapist to meet with Will. That turns out to be a complete disaster, but a hilarious one. Um, you know, George Plimpton plays him just beautifully. It's like masterpiece theater on acid. It's so great. Um, but Will will not allow anybody to kind of crack his, you know, the, his rough exterior and kind of de dig deep and do any of the work that really needs to be done. He's just kind of, because he's so intelligent, he just kind of toys with people and then wastes their time. And because it's wasting their time and they're really well thought of in the community, they kind of drop him. And Dr. Lambeau is really concerned because he's like, look, if you go back to jail, I can't, I can't partner with you and solve all these math problems. And of course, Dr. Lambeau knows, Hey, you know, this, that we could change the course of mathematical history, which doesn't sound really sexy, but um, there's a lot of things that need math um, in the world. So he's like, this is a huge deal. And so what does he do? <laughs> like a good, like a good mathematician who's exhausted 99 out of a hundred uh, choices. He goes to the last choice that he possibly can think of. And that is uh, Professor Lambeau's old friend, Dr. Sean McGuire, played by Robin Williams. Played by Robin Williams. Yeah, absolutely. So they were, uh, they were previously college roommates in a, in a former life, kind of had different uh, life trajectories as it went through. We uh, kind of catch up with Sean. He's teaching at the local community college and Lambo goes in and he's like, he's like, I need you to talk to this kid. I'm at my wits end with him. I need someone. Uh, <laughs> and, and I love it because Sean's like, well, how many other doctors, <laughs> how many doctors did you go through before you, before you finally broke down <laughs> and came to me? And he's like, I don't know, it's like five or something. So he's like, all right, send him in. So, uh, we can talk to him. So we get kind of this first interaction between, uh, Sean and Will hunting as they go in and, uh, Will, you know, puts up his same kind of front, right? He's the smartest person in the room by 10 miles. Uh, he's, you know, kind of nitpicking all of these things about Sean. And, uh, one of the things we learn about Sean is that his wife passed away uh, very young. Uh, it's kind of haunted him. It's, you know, basically, you know, changed the entire trajectory of his life. And, and that kind of comes up in this first meeting and it, it's very volatile. Um, Sean's reaction to it is, you know, I, <laughs> it's how most people would react to it. You know, it, it's, it's kind of this, this uh, strong arm kind of approach said, you know, we're not talking about this. We're done. Get out of here. Uh, but then Lambo comes back in and says, you know, send him back. We'll have, you know, I'll meet him again next week. And you kind of get this really nice um, kind of montage of Sean sitting at home, having a drink, uh, you know, pondering about life, about his wife, about what he's going to do about Will. Um, and then they get to their second meeting. And that's really kind of when Will gets put into his place, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really a special. Um, it's a really special scene. And it's probably it's a bunch of people's favorite scene. People say that this was the moment that um, Robin Williams won his uh, well-deserved Oscar um, because he isn't mad uh, and they definitely left uh, not on great terms. I mean, Will shows up and he immediately says, you know, let's come with me. And they go sit on um, on a park bench 
Um, and he says, Hey, you know, I, 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 you fascinate me and you say things that are so mean. And because you read something in a book, you think that you can dissect everyone's life and that's not true. And, and it's hurtful. And I don't know a thing about being an orphan because I read Oliver Twist is kind of where he goes with it and says, look, I'm really fascinated by you, but um, you don't know anything about me and that's not going to work. You're not going to be able to weasel your way out of this. I'm here and I'm not going away. And it's it's your decision if you want to talk to me or not. Um, and then he says goodbye and just kind of leaves Will on this bench. And um, Will has to do his own soul searching, right? Um, and his own thinking. And at first, you know, they have these set meetings and they have to do them. So Will will go and sit there, but he won't talk to him. And it's it's a couple weeks before one of them cracks. And the relationship between Dr. Lambeau and, and Dr. McGuire, um, so Robin Williams and Stellan Skarsgård, their relationship is really interesting because they were friends like 25 years ago. They were roommates. Um, Stellan knows that his wife has obviously passed. There's a little bit of tension there because Stellan didn't um, wasn't there for the funeral and sent a card. And Robin is... Uh, Dr. McGuire is very kind of pointed about letting him know that, hey, you weren't there when this kind of thing happened. Um, and Dr. Lambeau and him have this really good kind of candid conversation about what 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 is he doing if he's not talking to you? What is he doing? And, doc, you know, Sean is like, look, he has to be the one to crack. I don't know how long this is going to last, but he has to be the one to talk. I can't talk to him. And it luckily it happens a couple of weeks later and they start to really um, build a much more fruitful relationship as a patient and a therapist. Um, but it gives you really great insight into how Will kind of deals with things that makes him uncomfortable. If he can't um, be smart around it and try and dissect it and turn it into something that is meaningless, then he's just going to avoid it completely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You get a lot of um, really good kind of interactions uh, between the two. And, you know, you mentioned, it kind of that scene on the park bench and um yeah i mean you're you're getting this spectacular kind of performance monologue kind of thing from uh robin williams in the scene but you know kind of just just there and i i don't know there's something remarkable when i just watched it yesterday and you just kind of are are watching you know robin williams is talking and um matt damon is just sitting there and you know he's he's kind of like like glassy eyed and like <laughs> just like I don't know, just like stricken by the things that are being, and you can just see like the wheels spinning in his head. And it's just incredible. Like the, I don't know, just sitting there, just <laughs> thinking about what Robin Williams is saying to him in the, in the scene is, is spectacular. And then, yeah, as you mentioned, they, they go forth and have a much more fruitful uh, kind of relationship. And really, I think it's very mutually beneficial really for, for the two of them. I mean, you know, Will starts out as this, you know, very agitated, uh, very combative uh, sort of person. They kind of come into level terms. And then all the things that Sean is, you know, talking to Will about, you know, you're not realizing your potential, you're not doing things you could, you know, you could be out doing, you know, anything you want. Why do you want to want to stay here? And, you know, he kind of, he kind of gives that right back to him. Right. And he's like, you know, your, your wife died, but you're just are now you're, you're stuck like in this, in this rut, you're just a, a spinning wheel, right? You, you're not moving on. You're not going and fulfilling your potential, you're not realizing things. So yeah, so it definitely becomes kind of this mutually uh, beneficial thing that's just beautiful as you watch Blossom. And then, you know, kind of penultimately, it ends with, you know, Will kind of being able to move past, um, you know, kind of the hangups that he has about, you know, being the smartest person, being able to to get out of uh, Boston and go do anything he wants, because, you know, the, the world is literally his oyster. If you're a, a genius like this, you can do whatever you want, whatever you decide to set your mind to. And that's kind of, um, you know, ultimately what they're able, able to realize. But uh, one of the other things that Will is able to realize, um, of course, you know, people like this, they don't often leave their hometowns. Will never had, um, never was going to, and was scared to. And kind of the other, you know, kind of side story to this is his uh, falling in love with uh, Skylar and she's leaving. She's going to uh, Stanford. I think it is um, in California, somewhere in California, one of the schools out there. Um, so she's leaving, right? She has finished her time at Harvard. Um, she asked him to go with her. Of course he says, he says no, but then, you know, over the course of the course of this, you know, that's kind of one of the, the resounding themes of that, right. As we're finding more out about, uh, 
Sean uh, losing his wife and, you know, how important that was and love was and being vulnerable with someone was and not putting up this, this shell. And that's kind of where, uh, you know, Will is able to get to kind of at the end of this uh, movie, right. You got to go, got to go see about a girl. So um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's a, it's a really neat way that it portrays, like I said, someone that's uh, both genius and how kind of isolating that is. And then just also kind of, you know, being in like this insular kind of community, right. Where everyone's at the same, same level and you don't think that you deserve to get out of it or are any better than anyone else and uh it's just a, a really neat character study i think yeah absolutely i mean multiple the relationships between um multiple people is is really just amazing to watch and unfold in this um in this story which is why i i'm so glad it won best screenplay um because the way in which these characters interact through the dialogue is so palpably good um you know will is his best friend chucky and him have a really great conversation because um will hasn't really he doesn't open up to his friends very much at all so when chucky finds out that he you know and skylar broke up he says, you know, why, when, when did that happen? I didn't know that happened. And he says, oh, I was like a week ago is no big deal. And then he says, look, you're my best friend in the whole world. Uh, so don't get pissed off with a, what I'm about to say. But if you're still here when I'm, when we're 40, I'm going to, I'm going to kill you. Like, this is not cool. Um, you need to, you need to go do something. And the best part of my day is when I'm walking up to your one room apartment and um I'm thinking that you might not be there because today is the day you might actually leave and go do what you're meant to do that so many people would love to do. And it's an interesting idea because he says to Will that, you know, you don't owe this to yourself. You owe it to me. You owe it to your friends. Um, you owe it to the people who can't do this to go and do it because we'd love to be that smart, but we're not that smart. And it's such a beautiful kind of tough conversation to have. And I think that comprised with that and the, this other friendship that we're watching between Dr. Lambeau and then um, Sean around what's best for this kid versus what, how their relationship has changed over the course of the 25 years of them knowing each other. Um, that's also really another friendship that I love to watch because, you know, Dr. Lambeau is like, Oh, you're just jealous of my field medal. And Dr. Sean is like, no, dude, I don't care about your medal. I care about this kid. And you might've been at a math conference when my wife was dying and that hurts my feelings, but I'm not, I'm not getting back at you through this child. Like we really need to worry about how he is doing as a person rather than is, you know, what math he's working on. That's more important right now is his, emotional work that he has to do and they fight about that but they're still really good friends and mm -hmm. so seeing those friendship dynamics is really special and the way that they're written and the the scenery that they're taking place in because they did shoot some of this in boston they shot some of this in toronto and it just it's very fall-esque i mean <laughs> it all the leaves are turning and it's very kind of you can feel the cold and dankness of the 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 time that's happening it's mm -hmm. just really, yeah, it's really compelling, I think. And that's one of the reasons why it was nominated for as many things as it was nominated for. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of really good um, of those character moments you hit on, you know, probably my two favorite ones right there is, yeah, his interaction with Chucky there is their own kind of this job site and they're, they're having that go out and then, and then kind of at this uh, bar pub uh, kind of thing where they're sitting down and having uh, lunch, you know, Sean and Lambo talking about, you know, what's what's best for Will. And you you really get the feeling that they're both coming at it, you know, completely sensibly um, and <laughs> both both want really good things for Will. But they just there's just a, a little bit of, you know, those things just don't always uh, collide and coincide uh, quite perfectly. And I, yeah, there's just something about this movie. It's just such a really well-rounded well-balanced kind of kaleidoscope of all of these different things like i'd mentioned a couple times you know genius and your upbringing and uh you know what what that means for your life and and your friends and are you able to to leave them behind in pursuit of you know doing something a bigger and better and you know are you holding yourself back are they holding you back it's 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 beautiful and it's gorgeous and it's it's so great um in the dialogue so definitely 
uh, make sure you go and check out uh, this movie. So um, uh, like we'd, we'd uh, mentioned kind of at the top, right? This was nominated for uh, nine Academy Awards. It won two, two very important ones. If it was going to only win two, um, I think that these were the two of the most important ones. Um, it probably could have won, um, obviously, because Robin Williams finally got his uh, Academy Award, which is great and well, well deserved. And you can make the argument that it had been well deserved back for Good Morning Vietnam, you know, all the times he'd been nominated. But um, it was really important to break Matt Damon and Ben Affleck onto the scene. Uh, ben Affleck had done a couple things in some Kevin Smith movies. Matt Damon also did. Uh, Kevin Smith, uh, you know, Clerks Chasing Amy, Dogma. Uh, that Kevin Smith was one of the executive producers on this. So uh, kind of helped get it off the ground and get them in touch with the right people, I guess, to get this thing made. Um, but really, this was the first kind of thing that they'd done where they'd featured themselves. Um, and then obviously, you know, it <laughs> opened up this whole runway for, uh, you know, movies as as we see it now. You know, Ben Affleck uh, getting, you know, more Academy Awards for uh, you know, what he did um, in a, a film that we uh, covered here, Argo. Um, and that, you know, just kind of, you know, changing changing everyone's trajectories and like you said a lot of other really good actors kind of getting their starts uh casey affleck who's ben affleck's brother you know went on has had a really uh great career doing stuff like you know saving private ryan stuff like that um but it did it did lose seven uh sometimes that happens um it especially happens when titanic comes out the same year as your movie michaela yeah yeah i mean when james cameron spends like a billion dollars on making a small ocean so that he can put a small titanic on it uh and sink it it's uh, something, something's got to come out of it. I will say though, um, you know, as a girl who's, you know, in her formative teen years, uh, when this film came out, you kind of had two groups of, of, of folks in, um, in this time. And it was, did, did you want to be swept off your feet by, you know, Jack in Titanic or were you a will hunting girl? And I was always the will hunting girl. Um, I mean, Leonardo, you're amazing in that show. But who doesn't like the the who doesn't want this brilliant, like rough demeanor person who was also like so vulnerable and sweet, really, at the end of the day? Uh um, definitely these the two iconic roles, and it it makes sense that they came together and and in, in the uh, Academy Awards. And I'm not hating on Titanic at all because it was brilliant for a lot of reasons. Um, but I it it it's a good solve, I think, to to put on the wounds of anyone who's still hurt over the fact that uh, Goodwill Hunting didn't win all those awards um, just because of what it is. Because it's such a it's such a worthy film, and I think in the history of films, when we go back and we start looking at ones that were nominated for a lot, um, they ring true. And this this film actually ages pretty well. Um, there's a couple of epitaphs that we don't use anymore. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. that I guess were considered much, much more politically okay to use in the 90s. But for the most part, this film, it's shot so beautifully. It's not super grainy. Like, you know, it, it's going to age well uh, in the mm -hmm. years to come too. And and you can't say that about a lot of other films that were made in that time. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. For posterity's sake, the seven that it lost were for... Uh, Lead actor, Matt Damon, supporting actress for Mini Driver, uh, best director, best editing, uh, original song and score. Um, you know, it lost kind of those technical ones to uh, Titanic there, the music ones as well. So, yeah, this this film is absolutely great. If you're a fan of dialogue driven things, uh, this is a must watch. Uh, 10 out of 10 stars for sure. So uh, give it a watch and let us know what you think about Goodwill Hunting and let us know what you think about the uh, caramel apple uh, cocktail that we put together uh, for this thing, because it was delicious and definitely worth your time to try that out. So make sure you do that. You can send us pictures and your thoughts on Goodwill Hunting. All that stuff on our social media. It's at Drink the Movies on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook.com slash Drink the Movies. If you want to get episode recaps, pictures of our cocktails, um, pictures of all the other cocktails, inclu including the Argo, uh, go check that out on our website. It's www.drinkthemovies.com. And if you're interested in uh, connecting with us further, you can check out our Discord server. Uh, link is in the show description. And you can join us on Patreon, where we're going to be doing some bonus uh, content, hangouts, uh, live streams, all that sort of stuff. So you can check that out on www.patreon.com slash drinkthemovies. Uh, we appreciate everyone who uh, takes the time to go do that. And we appreciate everyone who takes the time to subscribe and leave a review for the podcast. Michaela, where can they do that? 
You can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Spotify, Stitcher, Good Pods, Near Pods, Nano Pods, anywhere where Anchor uh, podcasts are distributed. Um, you can find us on anything these days. We are out and about, and um, we are really excited uh, to be sharing our Patreon uh, to be able to discord with folks. So get on those platforms. If that's your thing, if you'd like to do that, it's um, we do two drops a week regularly. Um, leave us a five-star review because it really helps us grow the in community and get drink the movies out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So for now, Michaela, you know, I am tired of doing mathematics. Um, I finished my caramel apple cocktail um, and I do like a those apples. I did not get a phone number. Uh, so how about them apples? I don't know. So we'll have to uh, come back with a new cocktail next week. And we're going to have to go uh, back into the Marvel back catalog because we have some prep work to do. Uh, Wakanda Forever comes out in a couple of weeks, and I think we better go back and revisit Black Panther, the world of Wakanda. So we are going to do that next week. We have a really fun cocktail coming your way for that one. Uh, so we're going to go do that. So stay tuned for the lobby bar. Stay tuned for Black Panther next week. But for now, Michaela, let's take these cocktails and get out of here. We got a class. We got a class. All right. Through. Sound. Oh. Yeah, we got we got a class. We got topography, some sort of combinatorics class that neither one of us is going to finish. I like this idea. Okay. Well, we'll That's see right. everyone next time on Drink, Drink the, the Movies. movies. Got to go see about a girl. Son of a bitch. You stole my line. <laughs>